y'all. Hey. So, sorry for the lack of videos again. Yeah, it seems uh, to be the theme lately. Yeah, life has been absolutely insane. I know last time we brought the sad video about losing Tango, our goat, and um, I said I hope to bring you better news the next time, and I, I do and I don't this time. Yeah. <laughs> we had a pretty stressful week. Um, um, my dad had a very minor baby heart attack, if you even want to call it, that a uh, week and a half ago now. Yep. yep. And, um, okay, so a little history on that too. Almost two years ago, my dad had a massive heart attack and a bilateral stroke. He was, I'm gonna sum the story up short. It's a very long story, but he was at home by himself um, and he tried to call 911 and it rang busy for, I don't know, he called like seven times. So apparently he walked up to the road from their house or the country and was going for help, I guess, to neighbors. Apparently he collapsed on the side of the road. His phone was open, you could see the call log where he'd been trying to call and he collapsed. And a nurse happened to be driving by with her family and she- After like 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, we, well, we don't know how long he was down for sure, but think, yeah. we think it was like, and um, she, they pulled over and she, she saw him yelled her husband pull over and then she did CPR on him. Then the husband and the sons were running from house to house. All the neighbors were trying to call 911. They couldn't get through and finally a neighbor had a radio and radioed the um, rescue squad and they got there and they worked on him. Um, of course he was, she was, uh, she said he had a very faint pulse but he was, you know, not, they had to resuscitate him. Um, when the ambulance got there they shocked him at least a dozen times between the ambulance and the ER. ER, they took him up and put a stent in his heart and um, he was on life support. We were and we had just moved to Florida at the time. They were in Virginia and we got the call in the evening and we drove through the night and got there. Um, they got a hold of my mom. She's always with him and always home and happened to have gone out that evening and he tried to call her but she didn't get his call so um, it was just crazy and he was on life support. We were told that he would most likely not recover and they encouraged us to of course turn off life support and that he would remain in a vegetative state if he did um, remain alive and he beat the odds so it's a complete miracle god just just came through I mean, yeah, was, and um he's had some so he came out of that and he's recovered a lot and he's had some cognitive issues you know um but very much a functioning human being very yeah. and uh so he had this minor heart attack. His one doctor said he wouldn't even call it a heart attack because the numbers were just slight, his enzymes were slightly elevated, but so, but that prompted them to keep him over the weekend. This was on a Friday and on the Monday they did a heart cast. And when they got in there, they had, he had three major blockages, which we didn't know where he was as far as his heart went since that. But when he had his initial heart attack, they told us that he was, um, he had many, many blockages in his heart. And since then, my mom's been very strict with his diet and taking very good care of him. He's been on a lot of supplements, seen a functional medicine doctor and hyperbaric therapy and all kinds of stuff. So the fact that there were only three blockages at this time and everything else is clear, it shows how, um, for one, God has worked and has healed his heart that much and that the diet has also you know, helped. And um, so they said that he needed a bypass and at the time of his first heart attack, he was not at all a candidate for a bypass. They said they they needed to bypass three arteries, but they didn't know that they'd be able to. They thought they could only get to one from the looks of from the heart cath, but that was basically the best shot at um, you know lengthening the his uh, life with his heart the way it was. So, but went, so they scheduled for Thursday morning, um, and. They did the bypass surgery and it went extremely well and they were able to do all three bypasses. So that was a huge miracle in and of itself and wonderful. And he's recovering well. He's still in the hospital and we're on our way to see him. It's Father's Day Sunday. Um, and so that's kind of what our life has been revolving around the last week and a half or so. Um, and Derek's been working as well. He's had a really big job. He's been between hospital visits and the staying at the hospital during my dad's surgery and all that. Um, he's had to work on that and get that finished up. So it's just been completely crazy, but we've been a little bit chaotic, chaotic and stressful. But we feel like we're we're kind of on the downside of it now. And my dad's just you know gonna recover and. It's
theory, because he's done the bypass, he should be able to function better because he's going to actually be getting blood flow from his heart, and that'll also help his brain some more. So, um, you know, we're, we're happy about that moving forward. Um, the garden's kind of out of control. We're picking it what we can, and um, the chickens keep eating the baby pumpkins every time a new baby pumpkin. So he's going to yeah. our tomatoes. So we have, you know, we've had the never-ending tomato saga, and so we have a couple plants that are huge and look great, and they get blossoms, and then the blossoms drop off because it's just too hot and humid this time of year um, right, to grow tomatoes in Florida. Yeah. It's kind of sad. Um, tomatoes and peppers don't do very well right now, and those are my favorite things to grow, but in light of everything else, it's really not a big deal. We got lots of green beans. Lots and lots of green beans, lots of cucumbers, lots of zucchini. We're going to um, grate or maybe do some zucchini noodles, blanch them and freeze them. And do a can and green beans, a can of 63 quarts of green beans. And then we had, we probably had another 10 quarts that we haven't can that we picked. And then we're going to pick again and we will have another at least 20 quarts worth to pick. I don't know a lot. So yeah. um, we may do another round of green beans. We, we, we haven't decided. So. That's our update, and hopefully we can get some more videos coming out soon. So things start settling down a little, but yeah. um, we got to butcher chickens, maybe. Yes, so we, we have time. to get those chickens butchered ASAP. The Cornish cross, and then our the Freedom Rangers will have a good another month or so well, again, yeah. before they're ready. But we need to get we have um, four packs of ground beef left in three. the freezer. Three, yeah. three packs of ground beef left in our freezer. We went through the beef from our steer fast. Of course, that was the only beef we had in the freezer. We were and really, half a and it was only half a steer, yeah. And he wasn't a huge steer, but uh, we were really hoping and thinking we would end up butchering a pig and chickens and have, you know, beef, pork, and chicken, so it would all kind of even out and last us several months at least, but that didn't happen. So we should, we'll probably do a pig soon, so we'll have pork and chicken, and then we'll have the other steer hopefully be ready in the fall, but I'm not sure. I'm hoping he'll be ready, but Alright, I guess that sums up our crazy life in a 